Are you getting ready to host a webinar in the software Zoom webinar and you're curious about what the backstage feature is and if it's the right fit for your event? Well, I'm gonna break down what Zoom backstage is and if it's a great, the right fit for you. Before we jump into it, I am Logan Clements. I'm a freelance event producer based in Seattle, Washington, but I execute events here and all over the world. I want to remind you to like, subscribe, turn on that little notification bell so you get notified every single Monday when I drop new videos. I'm also the co-host of the Better Events podcast with fellow event pro Mary Davidson, and we go even more in depth into these topics. Our episodes are about 25, 30 minutes long, and you can listen wherever you listen to podcasts. I also encourage if you are available on Wednesday, December 20th, we are hosting the Better Events Conference virtually so you, yes you, can join us live as we go through a series of interactive discussions talking about the challenges that we're all facing as event pros going into the new year. We're going to have time for you to do a CEO day, think about your own long-term strategy, as well as some fun interactive sessions with some vendors sharing what they wish event pros would know when working with them. It's going to be a magical day. We hope you can join us. The link to buy tickets is up here and down below. Okay, so you're using Zoom webinar, and my caveat I will always do is I am talking about the Zoom software. You can host a webinar in Zoom meeting or Zoom webinar. There's no rules for that, but what I am talking about is a feature that is only available on Zoom webinar. You will not see this if you're in Zoom meeting. So with Zoom webinar, they do have a feature called a practice session, and now they have a backstage. So practice session, I already talked about that in a video last week. I'll link it up here and below again if you want to go back and watch that. That's a great fit for some people. Backstage is just a more elaborate version of the practice session. So it gives you more controls as the host or alternative host to control what speakers are on stage, off stage. It actually creates a backstage for you where you can actually talk with your speakers while a speaker is live in the webinar, which is a really cool feature if you're someone doing a more robust webinar setup. Okay, so here I am in one of my backstage that I had for a webinar that I was helping with. I see myself here as one of the hosts of the event. And then you can see above that lovely blue button, just like we had in practice sessions, that says start webinar. You will also see that big off air. So that is Zoom's very in-your-face way to tell you that you have not started the webinar yet. And you as a speaker are not on air, meaning the attendees can't see or hear you. So just like Zoom practice sessions, when you're in this feature in the backstage, you can see it in the upper left-hand corner there. It says backstage next to my next to my green check mark over here. Um, that's how I know that I'm not on the webinar live with my attendees. So this is essentially a way that you have your virtual doors are closed. Only your speakers and your hosts can be seen and heard to each other. And your attendees would still see that lovely kind of Zoom waiting screen that just says the webinar will be starting shortly. They are not able to see or hear you. So one of the really cool features here is that once you start the webinar, you then can control exactly who is in the webinar and who remains backstage. Now in a regular webinar, once you start webinar, it's usually any speaker who is unmuted could be could be heard by all the attendees. You can control who they see by controlling spotlight feature in Zoom and what view they're following in Zoom webinar. But I always tell my speakers, in Zoom webinar, if you don't have this backstage feature enabled, anytime you're unmuted, attendees can hear you. So me as a producer, I can't really jump in and offer any notes or help verbally to my speakers without attendees being able to hear. But when I use the backstage feature, I am able to verbally prep speakers in the backstage area without the attendees being able to hear me. So it's this very cool kind of extra step that we can have for controlling that process for our speakers. Now, one of the drawbacks, I will say, of backstage is once you hit start webinar, you aren't necessarily going to be seen on screen, which again was a good thing. We want to control who's on screen. But if you are a speaker who is not as tech savvy, maybe you're not as familiar with Zoom webinar or your speakers aren't, it does add an extra layer of complication and a little bit of confusion for your speakers to know, am I live? Am I not live? And so I had a case where I opted to not use this feature because it was almost too complicated for the setup that we were looking for. So again, this is just me backstage, the webinar hasn't started. Once we clicked start webinar, I then would need to move my speakers to the webinar for them to be seen and heard. And backstage, again, I'm still able to talk, cone of silence, the attendees don't hear me, but to be able to hear, be heard on the webinar, they would need to actually be physically in the webinar. 
Now, one of the drawbacks here also, though, as a producer, they made this feature so you as an assistant or a production person could be behind the scenes and stay backstage playing around a little bit with this. There was a limitation that you couldn't spotlight people unless you also were in the webinar. You also couldn't chat with attendees. So like if you had someone behind the scenes that you wanted sending messages to attendees that went along with your webinar, you unfortunately can't do that while backstage. You'd have to be in the actual webinar. So you'd have to join the webinar. So those are just some things that if those are crucial to what you're doing with your webinar, I would not encourage you to use backstage. Again, this is my overall takeaway for Zoom webinar backstage. It's got some great features that are much more complicated and layered if you are someone who really does these complex webinars, lots of moving parts, speakers joining mid-webinar. You know, it's an all-day session. Your speakers are joining mid-webinar. This is a great solution where you can actually prep them before you put them on screen. But if you're doing a webinar that's a little more standard with just a solo speaker and slides or a few speakers and slides and everyone's going to join ahead of time, I honestly, I don't know if I would opt for, for the backstage feature just because it's a little more complicated, a little less clear for speakers and you as the host if you haven't played around with it too much about when someone is on screen and when they're not. Well, that brings me to the end of my video. Hopefully, you know a little bit more about what Zoom Backstage is. Again, it's a new feature. I haven't used it as much just because it's so new. I've yet to find a case where folks are really you know, looking for something like that, but it's great to know that it's there and you can utilize and play around with it. Well, that brings me to the end of this video. I'm Logan Clements. I'm a freelance event producer based in Seattle, Washington, but I execute events here and all over the world. So I do wanna thank you for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye. <laughs>